Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. In this video, I'm going to be going over the theoretical and applied applications of Naive Bayes. Naive Bayes is essentially a classification algorithm that is based on Bayes' rule. So in essence, it's not really a machine learning model per se, it's more of a statistical model based on statistical inference. And to ease understanding, I'm only going to be using two classes in my demonstration to distinguish amongst these different classes. However, if we want to predict more than two classes using Naive Bayes, the algorithm is exactly the same thing, but you're just trying to predict more than two classes. That's really all it is. So let's go ahead and understand how the algorithm is created and implemented. First, you want to identify which classes the training set words belong to. This involves labeling which observations are positive or negative in sentiment. Once you have labeled data, you then want to calculate the probability that each word appears in each class. So it's as simple as having said word divided by the total number of words in said class. You would do this for each one of your classes that you are trying to distinguish. Next, you want to calculate the initial probability of predicting each class. So it's as simple as finding the number of observations in class A and divide that by the total number of observations in the training set. You do the same thing for class B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. But with just this example in mind, you just do the same thing for class B since we are only distinguishing between two separate classes. Lastly, Depending on which class you are computing the calculations for, you would then calculate the multiplication of the initial guess of the related class and the percentage frequency of each input observation with the associated table. You would do this for both class A and class B, and whichever one has the highest number is the predicted class for that particular observation. And that is essentially what Naive Bayes classification is essentially all about. And of course, there are a few considerations that we need to address. So what happens if our training model does not have that particular word in its dictionary or on its lookup table? Immediately, all of our test observations that are going on in will automatically make the classification value a value of zero. And so obviously this is not ideal. So if the given observation does not currently exist in our frequency table, we will automatically increment this by one and we don't have to deal with any NAs involved with our situation. We'll see this in our coding demonstration right now. Okay, so first and foremost, make sure you remove all of your global variables and free up some RAM, free up some memory to start off at a clean slate. Say your working directory to wherever your data lies in. And in this case, I'm using data uh, related to financial news. This is a Kaggle website. Uh, all you have to do is just make an account and you can just download the data and you can sort of just follow along over there. But nonetheless, this is the data set I'll be working with. I'm going to be trying to predict the sentiment related to financial news snippets. And you can easily use this for finance oriented models. So in this case, bringing in my data and doing a really quick uh, analysis. So this is the observations I'm working with, not totally balanced as I would have liked, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, right? Uh, this is what the data set looks like. Uh, we have two features and first feature is the sentiment. So it's labeled data and we have a corpus uh, where each of these observations here is essentially a long, long string. Um, so just for intents and purposes, I'm only going to be predicting two classes. And so I went ahead and I just removed the observations that are not uh, positive or negative. And so following the roadmap that I laid out earlier in this video is that for the initial probability, I calculated the initial negative and initial positive. It is the all I'm doing is that I'm calculating the table first, which is just separating out the positive and negative classes, summing them all up, and then summing up the total number of classes uh, all together. So that's my total number of observations. And just need to end that with that. It's probably another one of those. 1967. So it's going to be dividing by the sum for each one of these observations. So negative over 1967 and positive over 1967. And I actually just split them up into a 
initial probability for negative and positive, where we have 0 0.307 for negative and that number for positive. Okay, so these are some of the libraries I was a little bit playing around with uh, in terms of what libraries are good for this NLP stuff. Uh, however, in the R realm, I wasn't really familiar with some of these libraries. However, I just stuck with one library, and that was the tokenizers, which utilize this particular library over here. I'm just going to run that real quick, but nonetheless, tokenizing is essentially trying to convert this long string into individual words. However, I did do some additional functionalities of where I'm making sure all my words are lowercase and I remove my punctuation and numerical values. I've also removed redundant words or words that have are deemed with no value, and these are known as stop words. And this is reading from an English the English language, and there's already a pre-built um, list of words that are considered as stop words. So I just use that. And the data looks something like this now. We have a list of words that we could potentially use. So let's go ahead and take a look at the corpus, and let's look at the first observation. So these are the words that I'll be you know, essentially using. Uh, notice that there's a few additional words over here, single characters. There's probably like like an apostrophe that was removed and it just split those uh, into two. However, uh, I'm not gonna be going really, really deep into how to clean you know, your observations. Uh, to address that, you can just make sure that the number of characters are greater than three or something along those lines. Uh, you can also read from an English dictionary to see whether or not a word in your given list of words, as we see here, is an actual English word. So, but there's a, many, many ways to try and clean your data, but for all intents and purposes, we're not gonna be doing that and this is good enough. I'm also using a helper function, calculate the probability. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are essentially trying to calculate the frequency of each word that appears in that particular given class. And I made sure I just add one, uh, just in case of where that particular word uh, does not actually exist. And so we have that to calculate the probability. And then this is where I'm sort of just uh, splitting my data into positive or negative calculate the probabilities using the helper function over here. And then this is where the actual classify sentiment function is going to be utilized in this naive base approach. So over here, I was using this helper function, uh, the tokenized word, uh, to make sure that the input that's coming in is going to be a string. We're going to be splitting up the string into individual words. That's where the tokenized words happens. It's going to do a little bit of cleaning where we are going to be removing punctuation, numerical values, and stop words. And then we're going to be unlisting this so that it can be searched into well, through our lookup table, and when I say lookup table, that is going to be a negative or positive probability tables that we have conveniently calculated prior to this. And I'm just printing out what that looks like in terms of a test. And this is where the two probabilities are going to be, or predictions are going to be compared to each other. Uh, if one is greater than the other, then we, we return the greatest value, and that is what that classification is going to be. I also made sure that if there is any NAs of where we are plugging in an observation, and that observation has an unfamiliar word that does not exist in our current lookup table, it's going to return an NA. However, with this in mind, if that word does exist, I'm just going to make sure that that just converts into a one instead of an NA where it just you know, destroys our entire model. Uh, else, if it does exist in our given uh, data frame or in our given lookup table, just multiply everything together and multiply that by the initial probability of what we had earlier. So I'm just gonna ahead, go ahead and run that. And these are some tests. Uh, this was a observation that we had. Let me pull that up. This is an Excel file. Very first one over here. Issue, uh, actually, I don't think it's, it was this one according to Grant. Yeah, so this one was supposed to be neutral. Uh, however, of course, you know, when you try to predict something that is neutral, but it wasn't even, you know, put into our lookup table, it's denoted as a negative. However, you know, when we're testing around, the company is going under. That, of course, is negative financial news. Or how about you're fired, right? Uh, that, of course, is very negative. Uh, and so, uh, what's happening here is that I'm just printing out the stripped out versions of our given string over here, making sure all the words that we are putting in are only quality words. And of course, you know, just running a, running through the examples over here, operating profit, 
rows. That's, of course, positive, right? You're making money. Purchase agreement occurred. So agreement is definitely a positive word. That's positive. And then net income increased. So this is the high-level overview of what Naive Bayes classification can do for you. Of course, if you have a huge, huge dictionary with lots of lots of context that's associated with each one of these given dictionaries, they are incredibly useful. This model can be incredibly useful and incredibly powerful for what you do. Um, there are, of course, some drawbacks. One of these drawbacks is that each of these words have equal weights with each other. And of course, you know, there's different words that are in terms of like a different magnitude of power, but, but in terms of meaning behind each of these words. And of course, that's just not really true in real, real world um, communication, so to say. So that is my demonstration on Naive Bayes. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.